Cool. Ready? Yeah, I'm ready. What's going on and welcome back to Kicking It With Podcast. My name is Zach Holcomb. This is episode 49 and I've got with me today, BJ Murphy. Welcome to the show. All right. Thanks, man. I appreciate the invitation. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. So if any of you have paid attention, we're going to get this one out real hot and real fast. So it'll be uh, relevant to the current climate you right. could say of the mm-hmm. town so if you don't know if you were literally in a cave yesterday and yesterday being tuesday may 23rd the kins the down east wood ducks i almost call them the kinston wood ducks because it's <laughs> like that's what they should be um i digress the down east wood ducks announced that the team has been sold to diamond baseball holdings which is a baseball holdings company they own a bunch of minor league teams <clears throat> like the iowa cubs cubs fan mm-hmm. but um anywho they bought the team and then they spent a lot of money to purchase the teams, and then they didn't say a word for the whole day. Right. But a lot of other people said a whole lot of stuff, and a lot of that basically led to the fact that those Down East Wood Ducks are leaving the, the city of Kinston, and they are going to Spartansburg, South Carolina, potentially as early as 2025. Right. So, man, you were here. You were part of, like, the people that helped bring that team to town. So tell me about that. Yeah, no, it, it hurts. Um, it's um, – <laughs> When I was mayor, I was mayor from 09 to 17, and right in the beginning of being the mayor, uh, we lose uh, the the Kinston Indians. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, obviously, it was a it was a smart business move for Cam McCray and a lot of his business partners um, because there were really a, a ton of owners in that group. Um, so the timing was right for them to do something with that, um, which is why I hate the Carolina Mudcats today. Right. <laughs> uh, so. Uh, but you know that that took place, and then we went five years uh, yeah. with with a drought. I mean, you go into right by Granger Stadium, and uh, and there's there's no lights on, and there's no fireworks, and there's no national anthem plan. It's just you know, take me out to the ball game. You're not seven things stretch. None of that's happening. Cars in the parking lot, right? So five out. years, wow. um, and uh, you know, you, you struggle with what to do. So I mean, like one year, I even uh, I think that the men's uh, U.S. men's national soccer team was having a good run in the World Cup, and we uh, uh, I worked with Bill Ellis, and, and we opened up Granger Stadium so fans could come, kids could come, bring your coolers, bring your lawn chairs, bring your soccer balls, nice. and uh, and watch the men's World Cup in the lawn at Granger Stadium on the on the billboard with scoreboard. It was it was fantastic, like but cool. but but you know you you got to be creative with things like that. Um, and uh, so you know when when it's I can I can I cannot begin to tell you the number of conversations we had over five years about. What does the market need? What does major league? What does minor league baseball need for us to have a team here? Um, the number of winter meetings that our team member, our, our team members would go to, or even Cam McRae, who still was involved in the conversations, um, we had a lot of things going for us. Um, certainly, you know, I saw a, um, uh, someone, a city council member, wrote like a column or something, a blog post about you know. What, what does it take for businesses to come to Kinston? I'm thinking, you know, what does it take for businesses to leave Kinston? You know, it's the, the opposite is also, the question is also a valid question. And in, in our case, it was the market. The market decided that. Um, the city had very little to do with them leaving. But the city had a lot to do with uh, the Rangers coming here. Um, but it took a lot to make that happen. You had to have two teams. So we had to have uh, Bowie's Creek, which and then Fayetteville, the Astros, which are mm-hmm. the Rangers' rivals, right. uh, and the Rangers come at the same time. In fact, part of that deal was building a new stadium for the Astros team, um, it was the Woodpeckers, I believe. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, a lot of things happened uh, to make that happen, and um, the, the, the market, the forces, everything was right. And the problem for Kinston is still we're the smallest market in all of minor league baseball, yep. you know, the high class A. and. Uh, that, that doesn't help our case at all. The Granger Stadium is beautiful. It's historic. People like coming to it. It's got a lot of history there. A lot of incredible players have come through there. Um, but in the day, you still got to make money with your business. Absolutely. And you still got to get fans in the stands. And, um, you know, I, I, I've got some challenges, some things we could probably talk to, but I can tell you some things that made that work. It's our team. I, I was I was mayor. You had Tony Sears as the city manager. You had Bill Ellis as the Parks and Rec director, um, and you had Jim Colley as the city attorney. Then on the background, you had folks like Cam McCray who were also making phone calls and doing things. There was a lot of synergy with that group to make this happen. Kids is one of those towns where you need people fighting for it because. In government, it's natural for everybody to want to say, no, 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 you can't do this. No, no. And we were, we're a town where 
you need to try to find ways to say yes. Mm -hmm. Like, how do we figure this out? Uh, I'm not saying we break any rules or, or laws, but maybe we try something different. And that was how we approached the entire problem. And we figured it out to the point that, you know, one day I was on a mound in a Texas Rangers shirt with the chairman of the one of the managing partners of the Texas Rangers, Neil Liebman, um, and our governor, Pat McCrory, throwing out a first pitch nice. in front of like two, three thousand people. So it was a pretty awesome day. Our community celebrated. It was it was an awesome affair. But this 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 hurts. This hurts. It hurts a lot. I, I can't help but like go back to something that you've said there that I think has slept on so much and it was a group of people making calls, mm -hmm. like outbound calls, like mm -hmm. not just not just receiving phone calls and answering them and then hanging them up and that being the end of the day. And I think that's something that we're we're in dire need of mm -hmm. at a leadership level in the city right now. I don't feel like there's a lot of outbound phone calls being made. And I'll be honest, I've been here for a year and a lot of the people that are elected here, I'm critical of, of course, but mm -hmm. I haven't even actually met right. three <laughs> of our council members. I've been here quite a, I, three and a half years. Right. Right here on the corner. They walk by the window. Mm -hmm. They hate when things like this happen and we suddenly want to ask a question. But there's not a lot of like, not a lot of reaching out, not a lot of things being like, hey, you know, stay. How's it going? What are things we can do in the climate to make it better for your business as well? And so if that's, ha if, you know, and I'm not the Downey's Wood Ducks by any means, mm -hmm. but being a landlord is great. Keeping your leasee happy and fat and fed right. helps them continue to pay the bill too so, and, and bring other things. Yeah, so let me tell you a little bit about Neil Liebman and, and this team and, you know, what they did. Um, you know, Neil Liebman was, Mr. Liebman was a guy who, uh, he wasn't the majority owner. Uh, the majority owner, um, oh, his name escapes me right now, but I learned a, I learned a valuable lesson about money one day because they flew into town for the, the uh, throwing out the first pitch. And we, we got finished. We're in the back saying bye to the governor and stuff. And I, I looked at somebody and I said, well, what time, what time does their, their flight leave? And they said, Whenever he wants it to. <laughs> Whenever he's like, <laughs> you know, yeah. his jet was parked at the transport. Uh, and, but also, when Mr. Liebman was in town uh, one time, I think he came to Rotary to give a presentation, you know, and Rotary wanted to say thank you for them coming. And I said, you know, Mr. Liebman, I said, um, I knew he knew George Bush. And um, I was like, how awesome would it be to have George Bush, who used to own this yeah, team, right. Um, and uh, you know, come and throw out a first pitch here in Kinston. Like, mm -hmm. that would be cool. Be crazy. Right. And I, I, I said something to him like that, and he says, well, uh, I'm having lunch with him on Wednesday. I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll run it by <laughs> just my, my head just went. You're like, what? Really? Right, right. <laughs> uh, but, you know, the, but I, here's what I want to tell you about him. Um, when we had Hurricane Matthew, w one of the first phone calls I got during that event was from him. In Texas, right. going, how can we help Kinston? That's awesome. How can we help y'all? When we had a, a wave of crime in our community, guess who was one of the first people to call me? Wow. Yeah. A, a guy who started an oil company who, who owns the Rangers, but's worried about a little bit of crime in Kinston, which is a right. wave that every community experienced. But he was calling to, like, I think they, they gave us money to help with crime stoppers or get leads for uh, for our police officers for crimes and stuff. So, I mean, that's where their heart was. And yeah, so the community involvement was yeah, there. Yeah, and, and I haven't talked to him in a while. And yesterday I, I sent I sent him a, a text and I, I just said, you know, Mr. Lieben, you know, uh, this BJ from Kinston. And I said, certainly hated to hear, you know, the news uh, that we're losing you and your ownership group because there's a new ownership group. But he 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 cared. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think I, j I just said, yes, I said, thank you for taking a chance on our town mm -hmm. um, because that's what it took to get them here. Somebody being willing to take that risk. And he just basically said, you know, we really hate to make the announcement. You did everything you said you would. You were great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I mean, just a, a very kind, uh, generous man. And that is what we're, we're not just losing uh, that ownership. We're, we're losing people who, who really cared about what was going right. on here. Oh, so from the, afar too. Oh yeah. So I mean, the the news is tough. You're right. This new ownership group. I've looked them up to. I mean, they obviously have a, a great track record. Uh, mm -hmm. It's not just sports in the game of baseball. It is an entertainment industry, and obviously, this company knows for a lot sure. about that. So, yeah. I wish them well. But uh, we we do have some challenges with our with the city for sure. Um, I mean, for uh, to me, we ha you haven't asked about it, but I'll just go ahead and say it. I mean, to me, when I said a while ago that the, the you've got to find ways to say yes. 
Um, that means that when there's a problem presented and you're the owner owner of a property and you've got this franchise here, you've got to find ways to say yes. And their number one issue for a long time was replacing the scoreboard. Okay, well, how do we do that? What's it cost? I, I, I looked through the minutes because I was just curious about it and, uh, through our past story that News News wrote. In 2019, they said that we've got to fix this. And the city manager at the time, Tony Sears, came back and said it was going to be like 600 some thousand dollars to yep. replace it. He said, but no problem. We've got the money in the electric fund and the general fund, which is the tax dollars, can pay it back 60 grand a year for the next 10 years. By the way, my last action as mayor, the, the, the night I was leaving, the last thing I did was sign the lease agreement to stay through 2031 with an mm -hmm. option to extend to 2033. That was the last document I signed. Gotcha. Um, so when they said it was going to cost 600000 that's like a big number. You're talking about a $111 million budget the city runs. Huge. Right. Six, yeah. 60 Gs a year. Right. 60 grand a year. Out of the 111 million, I think we can figure out how to make that work. And and you know the truth is they they ultimately they punted the issue. The city council did they, they hemmed and hauled for three months, Christmas, New Year's, and and now we're going to re, we're going to repair it. The scoreboard is still there. Oh, how much was the repair? Do you recall? I, I don't. I think somewhere in the neighborhood of a hundred thousand dollars. So really? instead of just spending sixty this year and sixty next year, and then only having eight years left on that, mm -hmm. and spending. Pretty much the same money, 100, right. 120,000. I mean, you're right there, your ballpark. To you, you went and bought, <laughs> I don't know much about technology or computers or electronics, but mm -hmm. why would you go back and buy electronics that were made in 2007? Right. It's freaking 2020 no, no, <laughs> at and, that and point in time. It, it seems like it's such what? a small thing. I, that's, yeah. I think that's it's kind a, of it's the intent, though. Yeah, like, it's, it's it the, is a, where's your heart? It is a big issue of mm. how willing is this body willing to bend over backwards to make this work. Now, here mm -hmm. is a problem, because I, I had this question uh, presented to me about three or four weeks ago, and it was about the economics of, of baseball in Kinston. Sure. It never works. It, it, it never works. It has always been a, a net loss on the financial side. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now that we know that, there are things government does from time to time to help the overall economy. You know, like we spend $10 million on Queen Street in the hopes that there's going to be people yep. buying buildings, and guess what? Holy cow. It's, it's starting happening. to happen. Oh, people are even buying ones without roofs and putting new fronts on them. Okay. So, so like, that was one of the last major projects I worked on. Mm -hmm. And, I, you know, the way politics works, I didn't get, cut the ribbon on making it, but that was okay because I knew that was something that was important. And right. you're starting to see it happen. Right, right. Um, you, so when you look at baseball, you're like, okay, well, the lease is not a lot of money a year. Yes, there are employees there. You know, they good part-time mm -hmm. summer jobs. Uh, yes, there are employees for the Wood Ducks who, who live here and spend their money here. Yeah, move, in, move in uh, and take them. Yes, uh, Mother Earth Boat Lodge is kind of like the host hotel of the team, and so that is a good chunk of revenue for them. Okay. Um, but so when you think about the money the city of Kinston spends to maintain that place and, and stuff, it, it, it doesn't work to the city of Kinston's favor, but to the overall community, you've got pride in the community. Mm -hmm. You've got uh, it, dollars flowing in and out of the community. You've got people working. Um, and the biggest thing is, I think, I think the underrated thing is the pride of it. Mm -hmm. Because we're a community, again, that we've got to fight for everything. So the day we saw, and this comment was made yesterday on my Facebook page, the, the day we saw... Um, the electric uh, rate issue, we dropped them by 10%. You got, you got to think, we had to sell nuclear and coal power plants to drop our electric rates. Not something you do on a Tuesday, right? It's just, you know, th that takes a lot of work and a lot of moving pieces and legislators and do power and electric cities and 30, 30, 32 cities here, uh, 19 cities over there, 50 some cities involved. I mean, it was a big deal, right? Mm -hmm. Well, we dropped them that day. We did it. You know, the first comment on my Facebook page that night? What are you going to do about crown? And I'm like, can you can you just let us breathe for a minute? Like this was the number one issue our community faced for two and a half, three decades, yeah. right? So, yeah, so generation. Right. Like so you saw electric. Okay, well, okay. So the first comment last night was, well, okay, I, I sad to hear about wood ducks. What are you going to do about crown? And I'm thinking, can you can you just for a moment, help us figure this problem out. Mm -hmm. But Kinston is a problem. You got you got you, you question about schools. You got tax rates. You got lecture rates. You got crime. Uh, you got uh, remodeling down, re, uh, 
of restoring buildings downtown. Yep. I mean, there's all kinds of issues. So we've got to look at each one and you've got to find the right people, the right mix of people to get active, engaged in it. And I honestly, I think the city council dropped the ball on a very important issue here when they should have just said, absolutely, let's yes. do this. And I think they, they dropped the ball. The lack of leadership on that issue was disheartening to me and a lot of people who were involved in those conversations ahead of time. And you can't go on TV and smile and say, this is a good thing for the city. No, and golly, that was such a horrible, horrible, horrible look for us. We all look like, I don't want to say the clown word because everyone likes to jump to it, but like we look so stupid when our mayor shows up with a smile on his head. That's the first time I've seen him at Granger since, I mean, I've been in a lot of Wood Ducks games since I've lived here. Mm -hmm. Outside of opening day, I have never seen that guy at a Down East Wood Ducks game. Wow. And that's why I made the comment yesterday. At wow. least the Wood Ducks, on the day they announced they're leaving town, Mm -hmm. They did make a sale in their fan shop. Mm -hmm. They sold an orange Wood Ducks hat. Oh. Because that's mm -hmm. the cleanest, brightest orange I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. And I've never seen it at a game, mm -hmm. a Wood Ducks game. Right. I'm not talking about Freedom Classic. Not talking about other events. Definitely not talking about business after hours. But an actual Wood Ducks game. Right. No, and there there are there are challenges. You know, it is expensive for a family of four to go to a game. I, I get all sure. that. Uh, but, it, you know, that that's becoming the norm of just about yeah. anything you try to do a family experience. But the, re the reality is from a political perspective, uh, outside of looking in now, who, who had a chance to be involved in some of those conversations early mm -hmm. on, um, I think uh, we we missed some some small windows of opportunities to make really big statements. Mm -hmm. And because we missed that, I think it, it you got to understand, you got to think if you're in Texas and you're thinking about the lay of the land, you, you've got the Texas Rangers, but your farm league teams across the country and you're thinking, you know, this is a small market. They used to have 115,000 people a year. Now we're lucky to have 95,000, you know, in attendance in a year. Mm -hmm. uh, COVID did not help. Yep. You know, then the next year we're, we're up a little bit, but we're still not even where we were pre-COVID. Um, and, and you're, you're looking at all this and you're going, and, but we got this scoreboard issue and we can't even fix the scoreboard. And it's like, it, that's what I mean about, it was such a small thing mm -hmm. and people in their, in trying to do what they think is the right thing by saving a dollar, saving the taxpayers dollars actually cost yes. us, in my opinion, the, the mental capacity of their willingness to keep trying to make things work, you know, 1500 miles away and they just came to a conclusion over a period of time that this is what happened uh, th they didn't make this sale this week this sale has been going on for a while yep we've been hearing about this for about a year yep uh, so it, it it I just those are the moments when you need your leadership in your community to take a stand take something on the chest and say you know what this might sting a little bit but it's in the best interest of our entire community and yes this may not be an economic driver for city hall but it does benefit the entire community and people come here people associate something positive with our community not crime not electric rates not streets blah 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 it's something good that people could do as a family i mean that is what we need we need people fighting for us and it's really frustrating and i i really hope there's a way we figure it out and they, they end up staying but it does not look that way yeah i would say uh yeah i don't feel like they're gonna stay at all at this mm -hmm. point um so and but you know it's interesting too to watch them like i don't know like you got to toe the line of like following with, along with the lease agreement and so when you see elected officials come out they're the landlord if you read the lease they have to say that everything is roses and everything's great and it's going to be awesome and they're not going anywhere until they're actually handed the formal paperwork that they are leaving right so to have someone in an official capacity for the city come out and give you that whitewashed like bs statement that's like you know written by the attorney it doesn't mean anything. Well, you know, and I, and I read the statement. I don't think the city attorney read it, but I sure. will tell you somebody who's, who, who, who's in, and that's because I know Jim and he's, uh, uh, and it's not, look, I, I love Ron. I love Don. I love Jim. Mm -hmm. I, I love them all. I, yeah, I want yeah. them to be successful. Exactly. Uh, you know, the critical part here is I'm in the public relations business and they have, have royally missed how to market this message and give the people of our community some hope moving forward. A big part of being a leader in whether you're running for president or running for mayor or serving on a local school board is, is understanding the challenges, attacking those challenges to solve them, but also given this over the next four, five, ten years, this is what we see happening. Mm -hmm. 
You know, so you've got to approach it that way because people aren't going to follow you if they think the world is crumbling. Right. They're going to follow you if you're trying to lead them somewhere good. Mm-hmm. And the day we're going, the team is all, has been sold and they're leaving in two years, we're going to smile and say, but it's a good day for Kinston. No, it's not. It's, it's, it is, this is a sad day. Uh, this is very unfortunate. They obviously made some business decisions in their best interest. We 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 appreciate the risk they took for our community. Mm-hmm. They've been great community partners. We will work with them and some other potential partners to see what we can do moving forward. We think there's some good opportunities, but we got to work with the Carolina League, minor league baseball, the, this other ownership group to see what we can come up with. Those should have been the messages coming out of City Hall. Agreed. Yeah, it would have been um, – it's a much better, easier look to be like, hey, like – and we're excited about the, the ownership being here. And yeah, even though these players may be going to Spartansburg, we really look forward to develop, you know, showing them how much we can ebb and flow and work with them. And maybe they'll bring, you know, stay in town, put a rec league in here or something right. like that, like mm-hmm. a, a bananas team or something similar like that. Right. No, it's just like, um, and uh, there will still um, be baseball and et cetera in Kinson. You waited all day, and that's literally – they probably interviewed you for five minutes, and that's what we get mm-hmm. is we'll have some baseball, et cetera. It'll be <laughs> – you guys are still going to be baseball. Like, kids play all the time. Mm-hmm. There's a huge difference, and I know if you never go to the games, you wouldn't understand this, but, like, there's a huge difference between that guy gets paid to play the game and these guys drink beer and they're electricians during the week right. and they play baseball for the Legion. Mm-hmm. Well, there's still baseball in Kansas. It's t- – <laughs> <laughs> right. Mm. No, I get it. Not to mention also to retouch on the uh the 10 years at 60,000 a year mm-hmm. and like we had the money borrow it, plan it and again it's only 600,000 out of 111 th- million mm-hmm. per year. So over the 10 over the 10 years you're talking about a billion dollars the city's going to spend and they were Correct. they were worried about 600k. Right. I know 600k is a lot of money. Don't get me wrong, I would love to have it and that brings me to my first point is we'll still take in the $100,000 donation here on the show if you want to write that uh put it in an envelope. Right, uh, episode forty nine. Me and BJ will split the hundred grand fifty fifty. I love it. I love it. So, Thanks, brother. I appreciate trying you to get, looking out. Trying to get you paid for your time this morning, my friend. So you know, so you know business. My, my my opinions mean nothing apparently. So but, sorry. Yeah, but it just it pains me to be like, wow, we got to be really careful of the funds. And I understand, but like, we didn't we we didn't think twice about throwing five six hundred at a at a park. R- right. It, how or, much? Which how much? I understand, but the people that live here get to benefit from it. I totally understand. Do the people of this town benefit from having tax dollars and pride and having something where people from outside of Lenore County say, you know, I grew up going to Kinston and it was really awesome because my parents would take me or my grandparents would take me and we'd go to watch these baseball games. Mm-hmm. And that's their only memory of the town. Mm-hmm. We lose that again. Well, you, you, so the, the challenge with a, a community that's not growing, that still has the same infrastructure, streets, you know, utilities, um, you know, trying to figure out how to rejuvenate, which is why we did the Queen Street Project, mm-hmm why we figured out a way to say yes to the Rangers to bring them here. Yep. Uh, all those things. It, it is a challenge with where your priorities are. There are par- pockets of the community that want certain things to happen. So you've got to put all that on this kind of like master your know, spreadsheet and go, okay. Like a, like a plan? <laughs> yeah, well, right. Like <laughs> a strategic plan. Uh, and, and go, okay, well, we would like to try to do this, 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 and this. Um, and we may not have enough funds for this. So we'll see if we can find some partners. It, it can be very difficult in a town that's not growing. We don't totally. have unlimited resources. Totally. And so all these projects, whether it's um, the Holloway Pool in the Webb Park uh, or the Dragon Park or Granger Stadium or Bill Fay or Fairfield or, you know, you, you Southeast School, you, you name it. All, all these places are important to our community, important to the people who play or live in, in that area. Um, the, 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 when, but when you've got a, what appears to be a lack of vision and intentionality behind what it's going to take for the community as a whole to move forward, you can look and sound good uh, on camera or in writing, but a, but I'm going to believe it by your actions. And mm-hmm. if you watch the, the council meetings, there is a lot of punting of issues. There is a lot of questioning little things that make zero difference yeah, the, in the, the overall the scheme. Of what, what, right. Yeah. Uh, some I will tell you that a lot of times what we would do is we would say we need to make this decision. Um, is everybody OK with the, this idea? And then let the attorney and the manager work out the details. Like we would give the, our team enough flexibility 
to iron out the, the, the minor stuff. Yeah. But the, the goal is, are we heading in this direction? Can we do it? Um, and I, I haven't seen enough of that uh, mm -hmm. from an outsider looking in on that. And I've refrained a lot. I even had a meeting with uh, Ms. Barwick about a month ago, and I told her, I said, I've refrained a lot from saying what I really want to say a lot out of trying to let y'all have the freedom to do it. Um, I said, but, you know, but I told her, I, it was a month ago, I said, um, but if it comes out about this baseball, I have a feeling I won't be able to refrain my tongue on this matter because it means so much to our community. Mm -hmm. Now people are going to see an empty Granger Stadium, and now people are going to see the potholes and crime, and they're going to go, well, what's going on in this community? You can't spin things but so much. So I'm struggling with the positive spin out of this because I'm not sitting at the table. If I were sitting at the table, I can promise you, I'd almost assure you, we would figure something out. If it took me five years, if it took me 10 years, we would figure it out. But we would not be going, there's... Uh, we would not be smiling at the idea that they're actually leaving. Like that, that is uh, unfathomable. Yeah, it's um, it can't be a great day for your town just because you made the news with something terrible happening. Mm -hmm. that's, that's I understand that's the norm, but and, and look, don't get me wrong. There, don't get me wrong. And I'd probably start to wind up, but it, there is still a lot of positive things happening. We have discussed a lot. We've seen some great movements with the DKR board. I think mm -hmm. you're a member of that now. Uh, we've seen some great uh, things actually coming out of City Hall, some things that they've talked about recently. There's a couple things that I'm very interested in. One is kind of this idea of a social district downtown. Yeah. Um, and the other one it has to do with putting more enforcement on buildings in our community mm -hmm. that um, roofs are caving in and trying to be a little bit more heavy handed with the fines to to make more progress happen with re rehabilitating these buildings mm -hmm. uh, to I've seen some great things out of, out of visit Kinston and some things that they're working on changing. Um, I, I've seen some great things just from the small business entrepreneurs and some buildings being rehabbed on Queen street. I mean, the, mm -hmm. they're really, there's a ton of it, momentum. It, there is a lot of momentum. Yeah. And, and so it's like, that's a major problem and we've got to figure out as a community how to address it and what to do moving forward. Some of that may be just sidestepping leadership and figuring out on our own, to be honest mm -hmm. with you. Uh, but I also hate to see that the armchair quarterbacks at home saying, well, y'all should do this and y'all should do that, but you'd never see them put a dollar in something or, or uh, uh, start a, a, a meeting or something. Uh, so, you know, like people like Brandon Potter who said, I want to help figure out the Paramount project. I'm going to put a group together. We're going to do it. Like, mm -hmm. that's what we need more of. So there really is a lot of good things happening. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is just a black eye that I hope will, won't last long and we'll figure out what to do next. But, yeah. uh, you know, I'm not at that table and we just, we have to have some trust in that, but we also got to hold those leaders accountable. Yep, exactly. And that's all that we're really trying to do. I think, I think that's what you're, that's all I'm trying to do is just, Hey, let's, Let's actually get it. Let's just talk about it. Let's get it out there because the hand, the head's in the sand. It's not helping. Mm -mm. And that's kind of what I feel like kind of happened with that scenario where it was easier to just kind of not look at it. And well, they're not asking for anything. Well, they're not asking for anything. Well, they're not asking for anything. Well, you can tell when an employee is just like mentally done with you. Mm -hmm. And yeah, they've quit coming and asking. It's because they're just burnt out. And I right. think that's kind of what burnout just kind of happened in the situation. And here we are. Right. Things to learn from it. Right. Be proactive. Mm -hmm. Get out there. Let's meet. Let's be talking. Let's be communicating with our businesses, business owners, um, entities, all these things. Because just because people are here today doesn't mean they're going to be here forever. Mm -hmm. And you, you know this as well as anyone in business. It's a lot harder to get a new client than it is to just keep one. Right. We've got to keep finding ways as a community both politically and uh, in, in the business community, to finding ways to say yes mm -hmm. to projects, to things, to people, to ideas. Yep. We've got to find ways to say yes because the market is already telling us no enough. True. We know that. We've got to find ways to say yes. We've got to find ways to say yes to social districts. We've got to find ways to say yes to whatever the next thing may be at Granger Stadium. We've got to be able to find ways to say yes to something like the Kinston Wingman. I, you know, mm -hmm. I don't know enough about it, but News News is helping with it. I mean, like, you, we've got to find ways to say yes to plays at LCC. You mm -hmm. know, the, they're doing Matilda this summer. Uh, we've got to find ways to say yes to rehabilitating buildings in downtown, to say yes to uh, the community college and what it does. Five of the eight senior cheerleaders at North North I saw at a banquet were going to LCC. Made my heart so happy. Nice. You know, we've got to continue to find ways to say yes to LCPS and what the, all the good things they're doing with technology and the school system mm -hmm. to Parrot and Bethel. You know, we've got to continue to find ways to say yes to these organizations to help build up the stability of our kids and our community, the infrastructure here, so that they can come back 
back home and, and uh, give back, give our businesses some incentive to, to try to take chances and risk. We take a lot of risk every day, and sometimes it's hard to sleep because of that. Um, but payroll is important, our community is important, and we've got to continue to find ways to say yes. If I could just impart anything on our leaders in our community, Committee 100, the Chamber of Commerce, find ways to say yes. Yes. Cool. Thanks, man. Appreciate you coming uh, on. Thank you. Appreciate sure. it very much. Yeah, man. Appreciate it. That's episode 49 of Kicking It With. That's BJ Murphy. I'm Zach Holcomb. Hope you have a fantastic rest of your week and find the positivity in everything. Later. <laughs>